Hey, what's up guys? Hey, it's going to be a little bit of a different type of video today, but uh, then again, as you know, we always uh, try new things and uh, different things and strange things here on this channel. So I'll uh, give you a little look here what's going on. This is uh, one of those games that we played off camera. There's really nothing when you look at this that's so remarkable about it, which is why I try to keep games between teams that are way out of the running, out of the conversation off camera, um, in part because then I can get through the season faster and in part so you don't have to watch the Cubs um, here in 1949. Um, and I mean, you can see the Cubs were pretty bad. I gave up five runs in the first inning and they were just behind in this game all the way. The reason why I'm showing you this though is to talk about this Cubs roster. You may recall, this is just a couple of days ago that I had a video talking about whether, and sorry for my dog going nuts, whether or not we should actually um, follow real life transactions or not. And the reason why is because of some of the like wacky things that happen. Well, I'll show you here what I noticed with the Cubs as I was managing them in this game. This is what I noticed, right? I mean, they do have a couple of pitchers and they have like no batters. I don't know what happened here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 position players available for this game. Eight players and three substitutes, and we used all three. Go over here and look at the pitchers, and you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pitchers available. So you have 18 players available here. This is like a dead ball era game, man. I mean, this is just crazy, crazy, crazy. Right, it's a little bit hard to come up with a, a good lineup uh, featuring some of these guys, right? I mean, there's some guys here who are obvious, you know, Jeff Code and uh, Pafko. I don't think I was able to fit Jeff Code here into the lineup, so he was a pinch hitter for us. And um, nobody, of course, is hitting well except for Reich, um, who has barely had any at bats, and um, Hank Edwards, who we do have in the lineup. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we have him leading off. But, I mean, the Cubs just look bad. And the biggest problem that they have, though, is that they just don't have any players, right? And the question is sort of like, well, what happened with this? The other question you have is on the pitching side. I mean, you're not going to use either one of these guys. We have to be careful. Um, I'm sorry, we used four pitchers today. It was only three that we didn't use. We have to make sure that we have somebody to start in their next game, right? Probably going to be Doyle Late who's going to pitch on a one, two, three... Uh, three days rest, you know, which is not ideal. It's not really what you want. You want somebody who's pitching hopefully on four days rest. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not written in stone. We probably could have started late in this game on two days rest if we wanted to, and Diamond Mine would have let us do it, and he probably wouldn't have had much of a uh, punishment. But, you know, it's a little bit difficult with these teams that just don't have players, and that's exactly what's going on here. I mean, this right here is, um, I think, at least uh, the most uh, telling part of all because, I mean, this is in it's incredible. This is the full bench for this team. I, I swear, I have seen uh, teams from the dead ball era who have uh, had benches with uh, more players than this. Um, and so, yeah, we'll go ahead and exit here. Is the reason why I stopped it here because um, once you exit, you can't go back. Just for comparison purposes, I mean, you know, when we show um, all of the uh, batters here in the Phillies of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm sorry, it's ten pitchers that they have, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen batters for a, a normal size roster of 25 players, right? I mean, it's almost like it's unfair, right? One team has a seven-player disadvantage. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot. That's pretty significant, I would say. Right, we can go over here, we can take a quick look and see if we can just sort of uh, uh, get a feeling for what's going on. Go over to the transaction log and, um, I'm sorry, uh, let's see if we can figure this out. We want, uh, oh, how do we do this again? We want the uh, team transaction total. I was uh, pretty sure that it's one of these... Uh, one of these uh, things here. And yeah, no, this is only going to give us transactions by team. We'll go back here and try to do this again. As you can tell, I haven't uh, spent a whole lot of time looking at this. Um, uh, players on a roster. This is what we want. Chicago Cubs, yeah. Again, this needs to be really like needs to be updated. And you can sort of see what happens. This is what's happened in the replays we've gone forward. And, um, yeah, this is part of the problem, right? Gustine was out. Uh, Frankie Gustine was out for personal leave. Uh, Cabaretta, Phil Cabaretta is on the day-to-day. -day. Um, and then you have uh, Mattern, Clarence Mattern, who I don't think I barely played, who was demoted. Um, Ralph Hamner, pitcher, was demoted. That's not such a sad thing. And uh, then Lefty Sloat, another pitcher, was also demoted, right? But that's the problem, right? You have all these guys going down. Look at all these in the 18th. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seven players 
that day that were sent down or traded away, and nobody came in other than Herman Reich, who was claimed on, ra- on uh, waivers. Nobody else came in, right? So that's the problem that you have, and that's the thing that's going on here. That's a little bit difficult to deal with. This is the most extreme thing that I've seen um, overall. Now, I'll tell you this, at least at the moment, I am not an expert on the uh, 1949 Cubs. I say at the moment because I may end up developing some sort of expertise on um, that subject. Um, And uh, the reason why is because... um, uh, you know, as, uh, as time goes on, we're going to look at more and more newspaper articles from like the Chicago Tribune and stuff. We're going to get to know the team better as time goes on. And I mean, I don't know how many people are experts on the transactions of a uh, team that played uh, baseball in 1949, right? We might develop at least some sort of expertise, but man, that's one of the most unusual type of transactions I've seen because you have to go play the game. How are you going to play the game if you don't have players to play it? So... Anyway, there you go. That is theoretically another argument against using real-life transactions. But, you know, I uh, would love to know what you think about that. Should we use it? Should we not use it? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments, and uh, we'll talk about this more. Talk to you later. Bye.